Where is the economy in general going in 2024? Is it going up? Is it going down? Are we headed for recession? And some of you might be saying, well, Derek, 2023 is not even over yet. But if you really think about it, it's crazy that 2023 is already over halfway done. And we kind of already know what's going to happen for the rest of 2023, right? So based on kind of everything, the way that it's set up, we kind of have an idea of how we're going to finish out the year. Um, Fed, the Fed policy is going to remain hawkish, as in they're going to continue to raise rates. Um, Powell has said this, and after a small pause a couple of meetings ago, he raised it again this last meeting, um, just a couple days ago. The one that's important, though, is the September meeting. We will see how inflation is doing then, and we will see if Powell raises it again. But we kind of have a general sense. The interest rates are going to keep going up. The stock market is going to keep chugging along and will probably continue to approach the all-time highs, the previous all-time highs, as long as we don't get, like I said, two major things. I said this last video, and I'm going to say it again. As long as we don't get two major problems that can throw a wrench in all this, the stock market will continue probably up. And we will talk about the real estate market. We'll talk about the economy in general. And we'll also talk about the bond market, because I think all of those are very important. But in regards to stocks, as long as we avoid... A major recession a minor recession might already be priced into the market um, so I can't even say if we avoid a minor recession as long as we avoid a major recession or I guess more to put it more uh, in in terms or in uh, technical terms as long as we avoid a technical recession right which is two quarters two consecutive quarters of negative growth if we can avoid that even if there's a stagnation in the market uh, in the economy or even if there's some negative growth as long as we avoid a technical recession the stock market will probably be fine the other major thing and that's what is so important about these um, the Federal Reserve meetings is inflation because until inflation kind of gets under control the Fed cannot be more um, have more dove policies right which is basically it's just a fancy way of saying is the fed constricting money supply or is it making money supply cheaper right putting money into the market and that that alone can affect the overall economy so stocks probably going to keep moving up higher and i do think that stocks will see new highs in 2024 which leads me to the bond market right um because for the last year bonds have been doing really well why well when interest rates rise, bond prices come down. Because remember, bond prices are based on the interest rate, okay? So they have to come down to compensate for a higher interest rate. So when it comes to bonds, if you have bonds in your portfolio, you will most likely see an increase or appreciation in the bond value, all right? So that's something to note too. You will see a decrease on the money in your account because the percentage on the bond, the return will get smaller, but it'll still be, if you bought bonds last year or early this year, your return on your cash invested, cash on cash return, will still be the same, but the bond price is going to, uh, remember, because they're inversely correlated. So rates go down, bond prices go up, rates go up, bond prices come down. So you'll probably see appreciation in your bond portfolio. With that said, in 2024, are bonds going to be a good buy? Well, we're already seeing, in certain areas, we're already seeing bond price or bonds as an investment. Last year, I bonds were the craze, right? Because I bonds are based on inflation. As inflation comes down, those I bonds, the returns have gone from above, I think at 1.9%, 8, 9%, all the way down to almost 4%. I own I bonds and I will be liquidating here very soon. I'm just waiting a couple more months so I don't take the hit. Remember, if you don't hold them for 15 uh, consecutive months, you take a hit on your interest payments. So already I bonds are, are losing that, um, that edge because of inflation is coming down. So Stock market, 2024, probably up. Bonds, if you own bonds, they'll probably do well um, appreciation-wise. Buying bonds, 2024, I'm not sure. I think we're going to go back to a more normal uh, environment where it'll be based on age, right? Based on age and risk factor, you'll have a certain percentage in bonds and a certain percentage in stocks. <clears throat> now let's talk about real estate, and then we'll talk about just the general overall economy. Is the general overall economy going to be um, growing or shrinking in 2024 
what about jobs? What about your salaries? What about corporate profits, right? Because all of those things are interrelated. So let's talk about real estate first. We know how real estate is going to go for the rest of the year, right? Real estate is going to, prices are going to remain elevated because until interest rates come down, people who have rates at 3% or 4% do not want to list their house. Even if they want to move, even if they need to move, they're trying their very best. They're what is being coined as rate locked, right? They're in rate prison because it's like a blessing and a curse. They have such a low rate that it is very difficult to make a decision to sell or list their house because the next house that they buy, their rate is going to be much higher unless they're buying cash, which is already difficult to do nowadays because housing prices are so expensive. So that is keeping housing prices elevated because it's keeping supply that would otherwise be on the market off the market. With that said, you're also getting pressure from the other side, right? Because so few people, I think it's estimated that almost 50%, it's like 48, 49% of Americans cannot afford a house over $250,000. That is causing a feeding frenzy in the bottom portion of the market, or I should say the starter home market. Okay, what's it doing to that? That subsection of the market has, an, has more demand than supply. So you are having an increase in price from that direction as well. And until builders start building, you probably won't get a relief from that. Okay, so you have sellers that won't sell and you have builders that are having a hard time. It, it, they're already, builders are already building at record rates, but that's with interest rates where they are. If we bring interest rates down, builders will be able to build more easily. Why? Because funding and financing will be cheaper. Remember, builders are just like you, just like I. They take loans from banks too, a lot of the time, to build developments or to build houses. It doesn't matter if you're a national builder or a small time, you're building, you know, 10 uh, 10 houses you're a lot of times you're financing it through a bank so right now the rates are more expensive for everybody so housing prices probably going to remain high through 2023 we already know that what about 2024 okay now let's talk 2024 for the real estate market in general if rates can come down if we get inflation under control which it seems like it's moving in the right direction as long as sticky inflation does not become a permanent thing and it continues to move to the federal target rate of two percent eventually the fed is going to be able to um, change course and will hopefully be able to start lowering interest rates remember they haven't lowered interest rates at all there was a pause and then they raised them on the most recent meeting to 5.5 percent so if rates can come down hopefully the the market the pent-up sellers that want to sell but cannot sell because they are rate locked hopefully if rates come down if they have a three percent mortgage and rates are at four percent by the mid maybe late 2024, hopefully that, that's only a percent difference, they might feel more comfortable listing their house. And on the same token, if rates come down, right, hopefully builders will be able to build more houses. With that said, if rates come down, more people can buy houses, right? Because right now houses are not affordable for two reasons, because they're expensive, but also because rates are high. So even in 2024, I don't, I don't see the real estate market crashing. If you're waiting for a crash to buy a house, I don't have a magic eight ball. All I can do is go on experience and go on my education and go on what I see in the market. And of course, the most important part, which is the data. I don't know if I don't think that we're going to have a real estate crash anytime soon because there's just too much demand, not enough supply. And that'll take months, if not years to even itself out if we even get relief because of inflation and interest rates. So stock market probably going up unless we have a major recession or inflation is sticky. Um, real estate, the housing, housing prices are going to remain elevated in 2024. Bonds are going to probably appreciate, um, but they're probably gonna become less and less of a stellar investment choice like they were at the beginning of this year. Now let's talk about the general economy. We're talking jobs, um, corporate profits, right? Salaries, etc. So the job market is already strong. And I'll say that in quotations, because I, I think that salaries are, are not I think inflation is outpacing salary growth. We all know that we all feel that in our day to day lives. We feel that when we go to the grocery store, when we try to fill up our, you know, our car with gas. So I think that salaries need to catch up basically because right now inflation is still outpacing salaries so when we say that unemployment is at record lows that might be the case but even people who are fortunate enough to have jobs because unemployment is under four percent right now 
which is really good. It's really good. But even people who have jobs might not be getting paid enough to cover basic bills. So I think salaries need to increase. Will that happen? I don't know. You know how corporations are. Corporations try to protect profit at all costs. Corporations are owned by investors most of the time, and those investors want to cut costs. So most corporations see their employees as an expense, right? Um, so that is just something to be aware of. Corporations usually are owned by investors who invest in the stock market, and those investors want costs to be cut. And a lot of times it's it's the same people, right? Employees are investors. It's just a different side of the same coin. Um, but there are also big time investors in hedge funds, et cetera, that are investing in companies and hold um, voting power and hold uh, a major share in companies. They want costs to be cut. So there's always a push between employees wanting better rate wages and corporations wanting to push those wages down to cut costs to better their shareholders, right? Because one of the one of the key or core um, tenants in corporate finance is that you know it's deliver profit to shareholders. So employees are an expense in that regard. So something to be aware of. Um, corporate profits have declined. The most recent in this year and the most recent, I think in 2022 to 2023 they declined. And um, the thing is they were they haven't declined as much as expected. So. Uh, a lot of people were calling for larger declines in corporate profits. That was not the case. And you actually have some companies leading the charge. Um, and that's also pushing the, the market higher because they've done better than expected. I think in 2024, again, everything is tied to inflation and it, everything is tied to the Fed policy and everything is tied to avoiding recession, which I believe we are on path to either avoid or just, or just barely hit, right? Or narrowly miss. So. If we can avoid a major recession, I think obviously corporate profits are going to do well and corporations are going to do well, which is why I think the stock market will do well. If we hit a minor recession, the thing is, unemployment right now is so low uh, that there is a large margin of error before companies start feeling it, if that makes sense. Because you also have to realize that employment is key to consumer spending. And consumer spending is the backbone of corporate profits. 99% of businesses rely heavily on consumer spending. Okay, unless it's a B2B business, most businesses are B2C business to consumer and they rely heavily on consumer spending, right? So it's it's funny how everything is interconnected, but as as long as unemployment stays at a reasonable level, it'll take longer for businesses to feel it because people will still have disposable income. Again, that is also tied to recession because when recession increases, usually so does unemployment. But unemployment is such a low level right now that there is a decent margin for error before I think effects are felt in the consumer spending realm, I guess. So all in all, 2023, we know what's happening, okay? We know that interest rates are gonna stay elevated. We know that real estate is probably not going anywhere but up. And we know that the stock market is going to either move slightly up or sideways or slightly down, right? It's not gonna have a major drop and it probably won't have a major rise for the rest of 2023. I think it'll be up. I think we'll end the year up as opposed to down. Even from today's perspective, I think we'll be higher than we are today and we'll see how this video ages, but I don't think there's gonna be any major moves up or down looking at the data currently. I think 2024 is a different story because if we can get inflation under control and we can get this economic machine moving again, I think then the stock market has a very good chance of breaking all time highs and continuing higher. Uh, and I guess the other major two, I mean, bonds are important, but really people give a shit about real estate prices and people give a shit about having a job. And also people give a shit about their salaries, right? So let's talk real estate real quick and then we'll wrap this up. So real estate, probably gonna keep going higher till the end of 2024. I don't think we're gonna have a crash, but hopefully houses become quote unquote more affordable because rates come down and more sellers start listing their, their houses. They're just holding it because the rates are too high. So. I don't see any major changes, but slight up for 2024 in real estate. Hopefully we get a boom in building. Bonds, who cares? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Bonds are important to any portfolio. Uh, but we covered that, we covered stocks. And then the overall economy, I don't see some doom and gloom for 2024, I'll be honest. Uh, some people still see doom and gloom, um, but I think the major consensus now is 
maybe a small recession probably will be short-lived um, but it all hinges on inflation control and the fed lowering their rates so we'll see september is an is a is a very important meeting and we will see if powell and the fed lower rate excuse me raise rates uh in september 24th there's no chance that they're going to lower rates and it's most likely that they will raise in september 20th did i say 24th september 20th um so hopefully this was helpful as always i don't even think i I always say it in the beginning of the video, I don't even think I did that, but my name is Derek and I got my degree in finance, so you don't have to. I love this stuff, it's been my passion for over a decade and I have a lot of experience um, in this, just kind of basically as an entrepreneur, as a real estate agent back in my early 20s, um, I still do hold my license, and then as um, basically just investing my entire net worth in the market for the last decade. So I hope this video was helpful, I hope it was just um, an easy breakdown of what is going on and what will probably go on in 2024. If you like videos like this, if you're new to the channel, you might you might think, well, he's what is he just one taking this stuff? So I'm I've done a couple one takes. I want to I want to know if you guys like this or not. I also have edited videos, um, so it's just kind of different. And I'm thinking of maybe doing one edited video and one kind of just shooting from the fly, just basically talking to you guys once a week. I'm kind of giving you updates, right? So we'll have one edited video talking about specific subjects, whether that be stocks, real estate, um, something that the Fed said, a major change in policy, etc. A we'll lot of videos like that, and then probably just one of these once a week where I just sit down and I kind of just shoot from the hip and you know just give you my opinions and my thoughts on things um and just kind of keep it real with you no fluff no bs uh, but anyways if you like this stuff if you like personal finance if you like economics broken down into easy simple terms you're in the right place because that's literally all we do on this channel so please feel free to subscribe if you haven't already and make sure to turn on the bell notification so you don't miss the next video this is all we do here i love being able to share this with you guys um, again my name is derek and i will see you in the next one